Manipulation this, manipulation that, Johan Lieber's dark psychology, how to manipulate like my asshole. Look, there's a lot of dark psychology manipulation information being spread around the web. Where most of these guys are saying some random ass technique from some reddit post made by like this discord mod. I want to go off by saying that I'm not like the real life Johan Lieber, but I just want to say that that is not how manipulation works. You cannot just go and start quote unquote manipulating people like you're some anime villain. As a person who has read over a thousand pages of psychology, persuasion, and let's just say unethical books, which I'll leave a list in the description below, what I want to do today is actually break your conceived notion of manipulation or dark psychology and teach you what it actually is, then how to use it or guard yourself against it. So to begin, what is manipulation or what is manipulation portrayed as to the general public? So manipulation, as it's commonly portrayed, is like this shadowy art straight out of a thriller movie. You know, the kind where the sly character with a crooked smile whispers something and boom, people are doing their bidding. Or Johan legit just looking at a kid causing him to commit suicide? That's the image, right? But let me tell you, that's far from the truth. In reality, manipulation, or let's call it influence, is much more subtle and persuasive. It's not about being a puppet master, it's about understanding human nature, the triggers, and the little quirks that make us tick. So for a teenager who wants to forcefully win in life, what do you do? How can you achieve this? It's about becoming hyper aware and knowledgeable. The thing about manipulation is that most of the time in our day to day lives, doing some next level Anakoji, Johan Lieber, or Light Yagami manipulation isn't possible. Why? Because the author specifically creates scenarios where those characters can use those certain tactics. It isn't real. Do you know what that means, right? If the main problem with real life manipulation is the fact that you can't actually find situations to use them in, and then when you are in those situations, you don't know what to do. There's a lot you'll need to do to lay the groundwork and to accomplish this, but here are some skills slash knowledge you'll need. 1. Study human nature. If you can understand the feelings and behavioral traits common among most humans, you'll be able to be legit the real life Johann Lieber. I'll leave a full list in the description of study resources, but here's some main good ones I recommend. So the first one I'd recommend is called Dark Psychology and Stoicism by Unmodern Men. The second one I'd recommend is Meeting the Shadow, The Hidden Power of Dark Side of Human Nature by Connie Zivegg. And lastly, I'd recommend Psychological Triggers by Peters Hollins. What you want to do actually is gain and then retain this knowledge, so you'll be prepared in actual situations where you can actually apply this info. Second, understand psychology. Just like human nature, understanding the human mind and its function, especially those affecting behavior in a given context, can be obviously highly beneficial and will allow you to strike when the time is right. I'll leave a full list in the description again for psychology study books, but here are some good ones I'd recommend. So the first one would be the Stanford Psychology course on YouTube, which you can watch for free. And it's not boring, the, the professor is really charismatic and even teenagers can watch this because it's not that boring. The second source I would recommend is The Ego and the Lid by Sigmund Freud. Lastly, the third resource I would recommend is The Undiscovered Self by Carl Jung. So third would be understanding non-verbal cues like body language. Understanding non-verbal cues is like unlocking a secret language, one that most people don't even realize they're speaking. People might say one thing, but their body screams something else. It's about picking up those little signals, a twitch of the lip, a flicker in the eyes, the way someone stands, is the unspoken truth lying beneath the facade. Now, to really get good at this, you need to practice. You want to observe people everywhere, in cafes, in work, in the street. Watch how they interact, what they say with their bodies. Not just words, it's like learning a new language. The more you practice, the better you get. Number four, emotional intelligence. It's not just about understanding others, it's about understanding yourself, your emotions, your reactions, your triggers. The better you grasp your emotional landscape, the better you gate someone else's. The main way I would say you can practice emotional intelligence is 1. Practice stoicism and by now you should know what that is. Then think of emotional intelligence like a mental workout. Play games with yourself. For instance, when you're ticked off, challenge yourself to find 3 different ways to handle it. Overall, you just need to be self aware and always stay calm and composed. Number 5. Charisma and talking skills. Guys, knowing how to talk and be charismatic can legit make you one of the most notorious dictators of all time. Hitler was a nobody failed art school and joined the military since he had no choice, but through everything what made him shine like a diamond in the rough was his next level of charisma and talking skills. You hate him, love him, I don't really give a shit. Almost anyone who lived in Germany at that time can attest to this. 
So now that you know, by just having charisma and next level talking skills can bring you that height of power as Hitler did. What are you doing? So let me tell you how to actually improve this ability. First, it's about confidence. You need to own your space, believe in what you say. Confidence is contagious and it draws people in. And then there's the art of storytelling. Read facts with emotions. Make your audience feel, not just listen. This is where charisma really signs. It's not just about saying what you say, but it's how people actually feel to what you say. Next is studying. Watching people like Barack Obama, Andrew Tate, or even Hitler speak, they all have this secret talking power. Like Obama is calm, concise, and clear as day and sharp, and it shows. Tate speaks with unmatched confidence and conviction, and he can pretty much yap about whatever, and you'll believe him. And then Hitler, the emotion, the passion in his voice, the verbal hand cues, the whole room gravitates towards him, and he catches your attention. Number six, lastly, observe and adapt. Manipulation isn't so 1 plus 1 equals 2. There are different situations, different people who are bloody smart and knowledgeable, so will not work on them, and it may backfire on you. Be very cautious as to when to strike and when to defend. Remember, if you do use these tactics in a malicious way, be wary of the consequences. So now that you understand the basic groundwork, let's get into actual methods and things you can do to manipulate your victim. So step one is building rapport. The key to manipulation is trust. You need to build a strong rapport with your target. Practice active listening and show empathy and mirror their body language. This creates a subconscious bond and makes them more susceptible to your influence. Step 2. Identifying weaknesses and desires. Every person has vulnerabilities and desires. Absorb your target's behavior. Listen to their words and identify what they crave or fear the most. This information is crucial for the next steps. Step 3. Creating dependency. Once you understand their needs, position yourself as a solution. Offer help, advice, or support. Make them feel like they can't achieve their goals without you. This creates a dependency that can be leveraged. Step 4. Utilizing scarcity and urgency. Using the principle of scarcity and urgency to prompt decisions. This can be simple as making your time seem valuable and limited, creating a sense of urgency for your target to act. Step 5. Implementing reciprocity. People feel forced to return favors. Do something for your target that prompts them to owe you. It can be small, but it can also be significant enough that they feel the need to pay you back. Step 6. Gaslighting and reality shaping. This controversial step involves making your target question their reality through subtle suggestions and contradictions. You can start reshaping their perceptions. This is a delicate and ethically questionable step that you can use. Step 7. Using social proof. Human looks to others for cues on how to behave. Use social proofs to your advantage. Demonstrate how others are already following your lead or advice, making your target more likely to follow suit. Step 8. Mastering the art of deception. Learn to lie convincingly. A good manipulator knows how to bend the truth in a way that seems believable. Practice storytelling and create plausible scenarios that support your goals. Step 10. Exiting gracefully. Know when to step back. Once you have achieved your goals, find a way to exit the situation without arousing suspicion. Leave the target feeling positive about the interaction, ensuring no bridges are burned. Thanks for watching and peace on the street. By the way guys, I have a one year white room program and private community in the description below. If you have any personal questions on this topic, you can hit me up anytime in the private community and we are always helping each other out in the private community. Peace on the street.